Hi, I'm Mark, producer of Roundtable, the TV series born here in New York City at the legendary Manhattan Neighborhood Network Studios. The exchange of ideas is important, and that is why we bring to you the following presentation. Please watch. Good evening and welcome to Single Shot Show at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. It's been a while since uh, our last uh, program was recorded uh, due to the pandemic. The studio wasn't functioning and we're glad to see that uh, we back. And uh, we're back with one of the friends of the program, one of our favorite guests, Michael Calavita. Hello, Michael. Hi, Alex. Nice to doing? see you. That Nice to see that you're healthy and well and uh, to have you back in the studio. And uh, today we will have a very special episode. Uh, over this period of time, we decided that our program will formalize what was already happening with our episodes, that uh, we no longer will be just focusing on photography as our uh, media of specialty, but we'll be generally talking about art and uh, everything related to art. Still paying a lot of respect and a lot of attention to our favorite media, the one that uh, I personally and our guest today devoted our efforts to. And uh, on that note, uh, let's talk a little bit about what was happening with art, with what you're doing, and uh, what uh, art is doing uh, in the past few months. It was really shaken, the art world was really shaken but yeah. by uh, changes around us and uh, a lot of things are different now but uh, a lot still stay the same so how do you feel about it Michael? I feel that the art world completely died when completely dead in such a drastic way that even some politicians came out or several people on the talk shows came out and said nobody speaking about art no one speaking about the crafts and while everybody's out of work, you know, these people are a big part of the community also, and it seems that it's been completely stifled. I mean, the museums are all closed. Uh, God knows what shows will present themselves or will take the forefront moving forward. But what I have seen is really disturbing for me personally because I complained in the past about what's happening at museums and that new culture, new art should be always at the forefront, and for whatever reason it didn't seem to, it doesn't seem to work that way. But now, after all of this craziness is going on in the world, it seemed that, you know, the focus was gonna be on new art about masks, and new art about things that, I mean, obviously this is a point in time that these things are prevalent, but, I mean, do we need to have art now focused on that 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 was a little disturbing for me well, personally. Uh, you see there is always uh, a portion of art world that is focusing just on currencies of the moment sure I personally referring to them journalists of art yeah uh, I can not say if this uh, is good or bad it's a phenomenon on its own that's a group of artists who just resonates with what is happening right now some doing it better some doing it uh, worse and to a degree, it is uh, our responsibility as the artists to record what is happening with humanity at our lifetime. And indeed, what we're observing is uh, the single most important event of uh, decades so far. So yeah. uh, I wouldn't be uh, looking at it in with such, I would say, a negative approach. Sometimes those things just managing to, you know, level and uh, uh, control themselves. Sure. Uh, yes, at the moment, indeed, uh, half of what we see is uh, related to coronavirus and uh, people in masks. And uh, it's normal for one reason that uh, most of the photographers, when they're going out with the camera, what they see is people in masks. 
Yeah. And uh, that's at the moment is relevant and uh, there is nothing wrong with it. Uh, hopefully we wouldn't have to wear them for too long and at some point it really will be pretty dramatic imagery for people, pretty much like uh, raising of the flag in uh, Iwo Jima. Sure, sure. It's indeed uh, masks are the most recognizable symbol of our times, the most universal one. Uh, well, I see that you have a lot of skepticism about uh, the art world today and art world in the future, but uh, I uh, would say that there are a lot of different signs, indeed. Uh, we have a lot of galleries closed. Uh, there are very few events happening, and if they do, they uh, are very cautious, to say the sure. least. At, le at least here in New York, I mean, the, uh, the world is different, and every corner of the world they have their own rules, their own approach. Some countries and some regions are more careful about it than others. But in general, yes, there is a stagnation in everything that is not considered essential, but uh, who knows, maybe this uh, not a stagnation, but the pause we all needed, because if you remember, before it all started, we was talking about uh, art just going somewhere without having any sense where it's trying to arrive and yeah. losing more and more meaning every day. Um, the problem I have, I mean, it may sound negative, but you know, I'm a very progressive, open, free artist. Yes. I think I could speak for other artists as well in this sense. And it seems that not only in the art world, but just in general today, that if you want to exercise an intelligent opinion about anything, that you're branded as something, which is completely absurd and ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. I want to create all of my art is about positiveness. It's about fun colors and, and goodness. And I shouldn't be in any way ostracized simply because, you know, I see something I don't like and then I speak to it. You know, the, the school of public opinion should not be relevant or have any place in the conversation we're having right now. Absolutely. You know, I have a view and my view is a clean, honest, open, truthful view. And it seems the world doesn't really want to hear a lot about the truth in the art world as well. You've seen and heard some of my exclamatory letters that I've written to museums. And it's always really positive about let's have refreshing new work take the forefront. And art is for people. It's for evolving. It's for all of these things that for some reason have been put down. There's like a shadow cast on this. And, I mean, I just recently wrote another letter to the museums. It's perhaps the strongest letter I've ever written. And it's saying clearly the art world needs to be sterilized. And the museums need to finally make a change, do something different. I even quoted that I believe in the year 2021 that everything that's going on in the world right now is going to be exposed in a different way. And I believe strongly that many museums are going to have to change their approach and show authentically original work. And of course, I single myself out as a symbol for that type of work because that's really what I'm about. It's, it's truly original. No one has ever been able to call my bluff at any museum, any curator. No matter how outspoken I am, they always act nicely to me. And you know they confirm that I am, in fact, a very original artist and Indeed. you know this like question of why aren't I at the big museums doing a big show goes back to the politics of the world and the politics of art and what they're presenting I mean again I'm going to say something now that will seem inflammatory or perhaps exaggerated but there's something really negative going on in the art world where a lot of evilness has been portrayed and shown at museums, and I could cite some names, I almost want to, but I'm going to stay away from that. But there are artists that are doing dark art. It's like about the occult and about really sick, demented things, and a lot of this is never spoken about. And I have to be careful in anything I say. I'm afraid if I go too far, they'll pull us off of YouTube, because it seems the whole world is so censored now 
that I'm almost afraid to speak, but again, I'm an artist and I have to speak. We're on the show to Indeed. bring truth to the world. Well, we'll get back to it after the break that is uh, coming, I believe. Well, uh, you know, the stereotypes are always something that uh, artists have to struggle and uh, indeed I know exactly what uh, tendencies you're talking about but I personally am optimistic. I do believe and uh, history actually teaches us that after the event like this pandemic uh, the new and usually pretty healthy tendencies emerging especially in art. And uh, I'm uh, hopeful that it will be a case. And uh, there are some signs of uh, this starting to happen. And uh, after the break, we will uh, touch uh, on this a little bit as okay, well. Okay, great. Yes, so, uh, yeah. It's indeed really hard uh, for the artists to keep their personal opinions away from uh, what they do artistically and uh, not to let one influence another but even i'm not even sure if it's so necessary to keep them one from another after all we are talking about our personalities so we'll get back to this after the break Alex AG from Single Shot is here with uh, yet another single trick. Today I want to tell you about front aperture. Uh, everybody for some reason believes that aperture have to be in the middle of the lens and I did so also. But uh, at one point I've seen on eBay lenses that was actually made with aperture in front of them for conspicuous and I started to look into it and indeed you can have a lens that works just like this basically have it right in front of it and it doesn't affect the way photograph is uh, appearing. It's a little bit counterintuitive but uh, that's actually the truth. But uh, what is useful about it? If you have a piece of paper with shape in it, you can put it in front of the lens and your highlights will be right in the shape of what this piece of paper is. Single trick, watch us on YouTube. back so uh, I was trying to say that I'm uh, to a degree optimistic and hopeful about uh, what will be happening with the art world right now. The uh, pandemic actually did several things in the art world which uh, are pretty essential in my opinion and in my understanding. One uh, that is the biggest one it actually made it legitimate to uh, present artwork in a virtual form. Up until this moment, there was a very sharp division. The cream de la cream are in the museums. The next level is galleries. Then you have everybody who just showing their work on the website, and it's not much different in uh, public opinion from showing it on a curb site uh, next to Metropolitan Museum with $10 price tag on it. Sure. So this division was very strict, and it was changing slowly but still in the mind of uh, public and especially in the mind of collectors and critics, this distinction was pretty much chain of command, uh, never broken. Because of the pandemic, because of the gallery's uh, massive closure all around the world, it actually uh, caused a very serious shift in mind of people. Right now, uh, an average collector, an average art admirer actually accepted the idea of observing art in virtual form and then owning it as a physical piece after that without seeing it physically on the wall. Interesting. 
That is positive, yeah. It is a very big and positive change. It actually opened doors to a lot of artists because uh, if you think about it, we all uh, up until now were uh, hostages of the galleries sure. for that matter. Sure. Whoever the gallery <coughs> owner is pointing <coughs> finger at and saying he will be the next one. He's a chosen one. And just as it always is, there are a lot of uh, cult and very few chosen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this virtualization of the art world and art market is actually a very important step in leveling the ground and allowing artists to compete in at least a little bit more fair fashion. Sure. You don't really have to be in a major gallery in order to have exposure equivalent to what a person have in major gallery. And this shift, I do believe, will stay after the pandemic will be over. It's one of those things I believe that happening once, staying with humanity forever. And even though the cause for it was pretty accidental, the result probably would be permanent. Another change I do believe uh, is very important, and I do believe it's happening, and it's very important for you uh, because of the nature of uh, your art. Uh, on one hand, experimental art became to be more accepted, specifically because people simply had more time to look at what they was missing in their crazy life. There was this huge pause of several months when a lot of people actually had more time on their hand. And a lot of them spent it actually looking at what they was missing. And experimental art is one of the things that actually started to be recognized. There are more and more voices raised specifically over this period of time saying that this is something that is reality of art. It's not maybe art, it's art. Sure, sure. It's a very serious and very mm -hmm. important change that is important for me and for you as an artist and for thousands of other artists who are trying to do something different and new with photography. The art world in general accepted the idea of experimental again being fashionable. Sure, sure. And uh, the third change which I do believe actually is happening, but I don't have a proof, it's more of a hinge. Uh, I do believe that uh, from this point on, we will have the next wave of figurative and uh, visually comprehensive art coming back. That would help me, that would be great. It will <laughs> help uh, a lot of artists uh, in uh, the direction of art that you do and I do. And I do believe it's actually necessary because uh, with all due respect to what we have as uh, now traditional art in uh, our society at the moment, most of it is pretty abstract. Most of it is pretty uh, divided from uh, images that actually we see in the real world. And I'm not necessarily talking about realistic art being our next big thing. I'm talking about images that actually can be comprehended as some physical object related to something that we experienced. Sure. We're getting the component of experience as part of the way we enjoy an art back into the picture. Yeah. The, what do you think? You well, think it's interesting what you're saying now because I recently had a, uh, a pretty positive and, and fun experience in that a, a good friend of mine, many of the people I you know, involve myself with or in the art world in one capacity or another. A friend of mine had dropped off a few months ago several Keith Haring original paintings. Mm -hmm. And he had someone from a gallery, you know, coming to see them because my friend is based out in Los Angeles. And these two people came, met me at my apartment, and they were looking at the Keith Haring. And one of the women, and she's pretty famous, was a guy and a girl, is a Janet Lair. And she said somewhere, somewhere in the conversation, they were studying the herrings closely. They said, oh, we understand you're an artist, you're a photographer. And I said, yeah, I'm a fine artist. And they were really absorbed in looking at these Keith Herring pieces. And I decided mm -hmm. I wasn't going to say anything about myself or try to sell myself. 
I figured I'd just take a back seat. That's not what they were there for. But after they looked at the herrings, then Janet said to me, so, you know, what kind of art do you do? And I explained that I have an original art form, and I started talking about the letters I wrote to several of the museum heads, like Thomas P. Campbell at the Met, and, you know, Neil Ben Ezra over at the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco. And she said, well, show me. And I started showing her my art. And she stopped in the middle of it, and she said, do you know who I am? And I said, well, not really. Please forgive me. I'm pretty ignorant to some of this. And she said, you know, art has been my thing since the 60s, and photography is something that I really, really love and I pay attention to more than anything. You know, you need to check out who I am, et cetera. And then, you know, she looked at maybe 50 or 60 of my images, and I had a real positive blast of energy from her because she really, really liked what she saw. And I'm used to people reacting. But here was an art world person from years past seeing this collection of work and acknowledging that many of my pieces were completely original. And I even said, well, maybe there's more of a reason that you're here today than just Keith Haring. Maybe we were meant to connect. And she agreed. And it was such a good experience. And it made me see again that the kind of art you're talking about, where people are thinking, where they're getting involved in the process, where they're you know, using their brains and, and, and their emotions to kind of, again, evolve and, and feel something that's I feel kind of been lost for a while with the stagnation of art in the art world in general. Well, uh, as I said, Michael, I do believe that uh, we are experiencing all this coming back and uh, the feedback and response of a single person sometimes is indeed a sign of uh, what is happening in a society in general. I wouldn't be talking about the universe at large, but the society sure. for sure. We will uh, have a break soon and uh, a couple of minutes after that, but uh, you raised one very important question which we didn't mention, the narrative of uh, uh, the art piece, and that probably should be our theme of the separate episode eventually. Okay. But uh, we will have a few minutes to finalize what we were talking about today after the break. Great. single trick is about using red filter for black and white video walk on digital camera. Uh, you can use it for digital photography as well and it would be helpful but uh, it can do something with video that cannot be replicated by uh, any editing or it will take a lot of effort to do that. As uh, you know the whole world is uh, can be divided in three basic colors, green, red, and blue. And if you would look at your red channel in Photoshop, it's always the brightest one. So if you uh, start a video and apply a red filter to it, your high contrast image with a lot of black and a lot of deep white will be more even and give you twice as many half tones and basically more editing opportunities, more uh, of the actual shadows you can play with. Thank you and watch us on YouTube. All right, we're back. Uh, so uh, what I was saying before the break that uh, we have a few minutes to finalize our conversation and uh, we was talking about figurative art and basically the reason why I believe that uh, figurative art and uh, more uh, complex narrative will be doing its comeback because uh, the humanity recently had this overwhelming fear of death and uh, general collapse. It was pretty ac apocalyptic. Yeah. And uh, often when it happens, uh, the art is uh, getting more humane, probably uh, just to balance things out. Sure, sure. No, I agree. My art is so diversified that I tap on a lot of different areas. And 
I overlap in this sense. And a lot of what I do is, you know, as I did recently in the last several weeks, I'm outdoors creating like pieces with existing architectural structures that I add colors and do all these things in my complex, you know, compositions where I have up to 50, 100 exposures sometimes in a piece of film. But yeah, what you're saying is true. And it's, I guess, something that, again, is being determined because of, you know, the world and the politics that's happening right now and, and scaring people in a sense. Well, you know, politics are uh, politics, but uh, the fear of death is real. Whether sure. it's uh, caused by the reality of the situation or by panic, it is real, and uh, we was experiencing it for quite a while, not as just as long as humanity experienced it uh, during a big war, but for a fair half a year, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah. So something like this definitely leaves a uh, mark, and often uh, it uh, makes people to feel that they just need to live more actively, to enjoy their life more vividly, and in a way to be nicer to themselves and to each other. So hopefully that would be something that uh, viewers and collectors would want to see in the art of near future. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing also. I mean, people should, instead of just sitting in front of the TV sets and you know, being spoon-fed everything and not knowing what to believe necessarily, to engage in, in art in other arenas of things that's really going to be inspiring and put the mind in a place that it's not just focusing on that hardcore reality that, you know, is like beating people Precisely. to death in a, in a bad way. Precisely. Well, so let's hope that this optimism will actually play out and yeah. we will see some really great, very humane and uh, very positive art coming in our world anytime yeah. soon. Thank you very much, Michael. It's my pleasure. And Thank you. It's good to see I'll you again. I'll see you soon for another episode. Excellent. Thank you very much. found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark for Roundtable. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Yeah.